Hey everybody, here's my quick introduction to what we're going to see this weekend out on the awesome island of Santa Cruz. Happy to talk about all this stuff in more detail. This is just my very brief uh, pre-trip intro for you guys. So we're going to one of the Channel Islands. There are eight Channel Islands all told. Um, we typically think of the northernmost Channel Islands here as being part of the Channel Islands National Park. It includes all these guys next to us, these four, San Miguel, Santa Rosa, Santa Cruz, and Anacapa, as well as Santa Barbara, which is much farther offshore and much smaller. So this is where we're heading, to Santa Cruz Island. Here's a blow up of where we're heading to. So this is, we'll pull into Scorpion Anchorage, and uh, this is where we'll be spending the day, cruising around, checking stuff out. We, we'll hike up. <clears throat> this is where we'll be camping. We'll do uh, Ryan will lead us all on a cool hike around the bluffs at night. Really cool spot, this end of uh, Santa Cruz Island. This part is also owned by the National Park Service. The rest of the island, if we go over here to the left, is owned by the Nature Conservancy. We'll be on the National Park Service property. We have all kinds of interesting uh, factors that come together here in the Channel Islands. We're looking at a composite uh, satellite image. This is looking at the temperature of water that we have in our northern Channel Islands. We tend to have warm waters from the south mixing with cool waters from the north. So the, so the Channel Islands are really this transition zone. And the diversity of water temperatures on top of a bunch of other things leads to uh, quite diverse ecosystems. And those diverse ecosystems lead to all kinds of cool critters that live on the Channel Islands. In terms of things that live on the land, the most iconic thing for you guys is probably our Channel Islands fox, um, an endangered species. Uh, we had several sub, have several sp subspecies of these guys, each on a different island. But overall, these guys have, are a fantastic conservation success story. Um, we've done a great job in recovering these individuals just over the last few decades. We have more than 2,000 species of, of plants and animals and fungus and things that live on the terrestrial. Uh, part of the island and a large number of those at least 145 are endemic meaning they only live here they live nowhere else in the world similarly we have a lot of things that live uh, touching the ocean water and living under the surface of the ocean um, at least 2,000 species we don't know how many are endemic it's a lot more complicated when we talk about things in the ocean but a lot of things living in and under the ocean that includes stuff like abalone that you're seeing on top here, gooseneck barnacles, abalone, gooseneck barnacles, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, sea stars, all kinds of cool um, seagrass beds, um, all kinds of other marine mammals like these, uh, well, like birds like these um, pelicans and cormorants, and all kinds of things like <clears throat> northern elephant seals, sea lions, etc. We have a high diversity of things that make um, that convert sunlight into chemical energy. We call those guys primary producers, like these encrusting algae, like these uh, the seagrasses you see here, and all kinds of other critters. Because we have such a high diversity of things that um, uh, fix sunlight energy into chemical energy, we also have a, a high diversity of things that eat those um, that eat those primary producers: uh, crabs, fish, etc. I want to just highlight a couple critters that you guys can easily see this weekend. Just even spending a few minutes in the water, you have a high likelihood of seeing all these, or at least the vast majority of these. The first, this is Garibaldi. This is an adult Garibaldi. He is, this species is our state marine fish. Really, really conspicuous, really easy to see. They're territorial, so they don't run away when you go up to them. So they're very easy to see, even just looking down from the dock when we first arrive. This is a giant kelp. This is what Mr. Pector and the fishermen will call a calico bass. We should really call them kelp basses. But this is a hugely um, abundant fish. Very, very popular. They make great fish tacos. And they are just everywhere. So that's kelp bass. Then this would be sheephead. This is the male sheephead. The male are much bigger and, and banded in color. The females are smaller and salmon colored. The adults have this black head and black tail and this red inner, um, uh, band in the middle. Um, uh, we have one male in an area and then a bunch of females. If that male dies, one of the females within the course of a couple weeks will start to change and turn into one of these larger males. Again, that sheep head. Then we have another really easy to identify fish. This is with the, the one with a bullseye on its back. This is an opali. Opali is an herbivorous fish and really common um, in and around the dock area where we'll be on Santa Cruz. Then we have things like our urchins. This is a, a purple urchin. We have three species of very common, very abundant urchins in the shallows you guys can easily see, um, and several other species that, that tend to be a little more uh, down deep. 
Uh, obviously, we already mentioned our, our sea stars. We'll see those guys. Those are really cool. They're going to tend to be quite shallow. Also really shallow in the inner tidal mostly will be things like these mussels. Um, associated with the kelp will be these, these uh, crabs like this one here, the pugetia, which is a kelp crab. And then we'll have things like this, these cool snails. In this case, this is Norissia norisi. This is a kelp snail, really, really cool orange shell. If you don't see these guys living, they have really nice bright orange skin. If you find a, um, if a guy's dead and you find the shell, you can still identify him. Really, really obvious orange shell, a little black towards the whorl, and a lot of times you even see an, a green tinge on the inner side there. So that's, that's Norissia norisi, a kelp snail. All these guys are easy to see. Garibaldi, Kelp bass, sheephead, opali, purple urchin, um, uh, pisaster, uh, uh, sea star, starfish, um, norisia, kelp snail, pagetia, kelp crab, and any of our mussels. The most important thing, though, that I didn't list, but everybody will see when we're, even as the boat's approaching, is the massive beauty that are our giant kelp forests in and around the Channel Islands. So the Scientific name for this particular alga is Macrocystis pyrifera. Giant kelp is the common name. These guys are really cool, just like we have an individual tree that sometimes is alone, and then out um, it can also form groves or, or huge stands. Same thing happens in the ocean. In this case, our kelp form these giant stands that we call um, kelp forests. Look, they function just like a forest does on land. Um, they provide a huge amount that they change how the water moves huge very very productive indeed it's the most productive it's not a plant technically it's an alga but the most pr productive um, quote unquote plant on the planet it grows incredibly fast and that productivity is key things not only live in them and and feed on the the tissue a huge number of our kelp forest critters actually feed off the sloughed off or the fallen off tissue of these kelp forests because they are so productive if we look at an individual kelp, um, they're really, really cool. Now, we're going at, in the late summer, early fall, and so a lot of the plants are getting ready to um, uh, sort of die back, and so they might look a little ragged. This guy is a really fresh young one, but they all follow this interesting morphology. And while, again, they're not, a, technically speaking, they're not a plant, they're very similar in many um, their, their morphology is very similar to what we think of as terrestrial plants. So for example, they don't have roots. They have these things we call holdfasts. Roots go in the soil. These guys glue the plant, attach the plant, the individual, to the bottom of the ocean, to a rocky substrate. Then we have these things that are equivalent to stems on a plant. We call those a stipe. And then the, what we would consider, what look like to be leaves are actually fronds, algal fronds, and so those are fronds. And then at the base of these leaves here and there, you'll see these bubbles or the, these little circular things. Those are pneumatocysts. The P is, is silent, pneumatocysts. And those help the individual frond and stipes be buoyant and float up to the surface so they're near the sunlight and they can photosynthesize. All kinds of factors influence uh, where our kelp forests are, such as nutrients, such as temperature, etc. Just like there's lots of abiotic or non-living factors that influence where the forests live, there's also lots of biotic fa uh, factors, most principally things like grazing. So these, these uh, organisms sometimes eat too many of these plants, these individuals, and they disappear. There's predators, there's grazers, all kinds of stuff is going to go on in these forests. Really, really cool. In addition to just the, the cool biology, we also have some challenges. So primarily stemming from the fact there's so many people that live so close to the Channel Islands. First and foremost, we can think of fishing. People take a lot of fish out of the waters around the Channel Islands. That's both for fun, what you and I might do, recreational fishing, as well as uh, industrial or commercial fishing. So the thing we've done there to, to make sure that's not a huge problem um, is here are our islands again. Um, this is the area that is in, within the national park, so very close, tight in to the, to the land mass of the islands. We also have what we call state water. State waters go out three nautical mi miles from the shore. We have, in addition to the National Park, we have the National Marine Sanctuary, a different uh, federal organization that makes sure our waters are healthy and, and being well maintained. And within those areas, we have what are called marine protected areas. These are parks. These are areas where we, we're not allowed to fish. 
We can go snorkel there, we can go kayak there, but we're not allowed to fish, and that allows the fish to grow up and be pretty healthy here and can spill out to these areas outside of these protected areas, and, and the fish that grow up here can spill out and replenish the populations that we fish out here. So marine protected areas and the marine protected area network around the Channel Islands are a fantastic tool to make sure that we don't take too many fish from our oceans. Another big, and, and, and that you, see, you see that right here, so here's Santa Cruz here, the, the reserves right around, the marine protected areas right around Santa Cruz. This is where we're going to be in Scorpion, so if you guys want to go fishing, you can just go a little bit farther over here, and it's fine to fish if you'd like. Um, that the last challenge I'll just mention is the fact that we do, unfortunately, our society produces a huge amount of waste, a huge amount of garbage, and we usually refer to that as marine debris. <clears throat> uh, lots of folks are working on this challenge. One of the um, great things that we can do, though, as scouts, as we go out to the islands, is to try to help out. And it just turns out that tomorrow, Saturday, is our California Coastal Cleanup Day. This is going on across California, indeed across the world. And so we're going to go clean up our beach, collect all that garbage and plastic and stuff, put it in a bag, measure it, and, and bring it back and report that to the state so we can get a sense of how much trash is and where that is across the state of California. So you guys are going to be helping us to deal with our trash problem on Santa Cruz Island. So thanks a lot, you guys. We're going to have a great trip. Can't wait to see everybody there. Ryan has a fantastic series of events planned for us. Looking forward to see everyone this weekend at Santa Cruz Island.